Remember the opening sequences of the first episode of Alchemy of Souls? As it turns out, the soul shifter Jang Gang disposed of was none other than Shaman Choi's son. Has her reasons for vengeance finally been revealed? This would explain why Jang Gang is looking for her as well. Additionally, Jin Woo Tuck is Shaman Choi's brother. And check this out guys, doesn't Jin Woo Tuck look like Joseph Gordon Levitt? With So Yi being presented to Jin Ho Gyeong as Bu Yun, it seems as though Shaman Choi and Jin Moo's plan is finally at the precipice as the doors of Jin Yo Wan opens with Mu Dok coincidentally in the background. Meanwhile, the crown prince and jung -ok find themselves together in search of eunuch Kim, like an episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. They meet a shaman that provides them with more information about Shaman Choi, which leads us to our man of mystery and the man of the hour, Jang Gang. Where and what has he been doing this whole time? Will he reveal all the unsolved mysteries of the Ice Stone? So this is pretty cool. Episode 15 and 16 reveals yes. a lot more, of course. They always reveal mm. more and more of the story uh, as uh, each episode passes by and Master Mr. Lee's talking about his soul shifting. <laughs> this is a funny story. I didn't actually expect it to be so campy. Like, <laughs> Ho Yum just returns after like a hundred day meditation by Li Chul. And he's shifted. He's testing the waters of Huan Tzu. And uh, he's like, oh man, master's dead. Burn his body. <laughs> yeah, like, he is kind of a fool. Like, how, how would you expect your own master to have died that way, in that manner, without even knowing that something has happened? All of our predictions and theories about Master Lee being so young was completely wrong, as it represents the new level of reaching Huan Tzu. And he made it just in time. He made it back to save at least his cane, <laughs> yeah. so that he had some semblance or some kind of reminder of his old life. Uh, so that explains Master Lee, his age and, his, and the age of his body in the age of his soul um and it also explains that he's not like secretly a nefarious villain that is also a soul shifter right uh and so we learn at least that Huan Su gives you the ability to shift into bodies whereas you know the soul ejector allows you to switch bodies with like another living being like taking over their body well i think the biggest difference here is that anyone can use a soul ejector to kind of uh, soul shift there's a little bit of like gray area there of what happens if you can just do it because you have the power of Huan Su versus using the soul ejector to totally like just take over another yeah body. i mean at the very least the moral is there he chose a dead body and <laughs> brought the boy back to life right in his own soul uh r.i.p boy we don't know finally you know he's threatening to bring the gigu into the palace mm -hmm. and expose the soul shifter that's among them and along the way they find out there's a whole bunch of soul shifters <laughs> in the palace we see shaman choi in the body of the queen being very stupid mm -hmm. and falling victim to master lee instilling fear and i don't know why nobody in there <laughs> noticed <laughs> i think people notice you know like especially the crown prince Go he kind of yes. he kind of knows something is up and he suspects the queen already that's supposedly his mother right like she's acting yeah. a little bit weird and that's that's the thing that happens every time uh, you're being suspected of something you act out in some sort of defense and we've been saying this in the past couple of episodes as well is that they all seem so damn obvious that they're behind all of this bad things that are happening throughout the whole entire kingdom. At the very least, you know, Go-On is, is redeeming himself. He is just, you know, he's got his, you know, proclivities. He acts the way he does, yep. but he has the best he interests in He might actually be the wisest out of them all. You yeah. Know? He's playing dumb here and there. He's and then... not even part of everyone's <laughs> investigations, exactly. and he's putting things together yeah. on his own. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, that display of power by Master Lee was absolutely amazing. Holy crap. Yeah, I was like, okay, Jinmu, what are you going to do here? And then meanwhile, uh, the pieces are starting to move for Shaman Choi and Jinmu's plans. So Yi and the other uh, mage master or whatever are going off killing everyone that might recognize who she is. But it's in this moment where So Yi is starting to put together the puzzle pieces herself. Right. Because she's starting to realize that the sash that Mujok had had the same symbol uh, of the Jin family crest that she sees when she is like looking at the sash they're giving right. her to be uh, mm -hmm. Buyun. And so at the very end there, she sees that, that Mudok is there as the door is opening. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the sorcery worm with uh, Choyun's blood mm -hmm. was the one that opened the door. I oh, still no, think not it all. was Mudok. It was Mudok. I do think that somewhere along in the future that she's gonna put the pieces together. Soyi kind of acting like the daughter. There's gonna be something about her acting or the way she's behaving as as, as yeah. the daughter to kind of tip it off a little. And of course, in classic K-drama fashion, they did what Flip did not want to do. <laughs> they spent uh, a lot of time a lot of on Dungu and yes. uh, Choyun's relationship. I appreciated it because, you know, it's 
It's a large part of the drama with yeah. uh, Jin Park, like always being slow witted. And he's still uh, slow witted. She had a love charm. She was getting some scalper tickets at the inn, and she was actually instrumental in clearing Maduk's name from those murders that So Yi and that mm -hmm. mage was going around killing. There's this whole like Romeo and Juliet forbidden love yep. between the two families. I could also root for Park Jin too, but he is just so dumb. He just <laughs> like, he asked uh, maidservant Kim all of these questions, and she thinks that he's he's sort of like confessing to her like right then and there. We're but... asking her how she feels about him. Exactly, and he's like. Oh, Oh, let me get That's my how secret she stash feels. of wine. <laughs> That's know? how she feels about, about Master, Master Lee. Lee. Oh my goodness. And then Master Lee returns Noxu's sword. Mm. But with the condition that if she ever has to use it or draw yes. it, he will kill her. Yes. And uh, we see in the trailer, or at least the previews, mm -hmm. she has she's forced to. So I don't know what the context is around her drawing the sword again. Does she have her powers back? Or is she just, you know, kind of just doing a gesture to, to show that she wants to protect uh, Jung Hook? Like, yeah. I know we're winding down on the season and the episodes, and, and we, we want to talk about season two as well, but we'll do that in the future uh, when the season starts to kind of come to its close. But Muduk, like, pulling that sword, something might happen in terms of her regaining some sort of power by way of of Boyun reawakening the more she spends time with with the with the Jin Yuong family and some of those powers might be in there but also yeah. from Shaman Choi it's it's been revealed that Shaman Choi can unlock the mage's power that's been trapped that's why you have Jang Uk and the crown prince suddenly like meeting together into this village looking for Shaman Choi but they run into Shaman Shaman Jong Shaman Bong <laughs> what is it <laughs> so yeah that leads me to believe that there's going to be a confrontation between Shaman Choi and Mudok, and she's going to use her powers and inadvertently unseal mm. uh, Mudok or Buyun's uh, secret powers. Then we meet the man of mystery who's been missing throughout the whole this entire story, and the guy responsible for everything that's been happening. Jang Gang returns, and we just don't know what he's been up I to. Don't know What's anything. he been doing? What's going to happen when he returns? We'll say I think that Jang Gang has finally returned because it is now out in the open that Jang Uk got his gates of energy uh, opened. Oh, and how the, the rumors have spread. Yeah, and the the energy of the King Star has finally kind of, uh, I guess, caused Jang Eng to, to return. I, I have no idea. Like, he just kind of shows him, shows himself in front of Jang Uk in kind of a way like, hey, daddy's back. But, but like, I think he's going to reveal the truth, kind of reveal that the Ice Stone is still out there. And I think that's why in the previews you see kind of like Song Rim and, and the Cheng Wuban and the Jin family kind of like getting into some sort of scuffle. And of course that, pe that petrified mage that they were trying to bring back uh, in that preview shows up again and so I think we're just gonna have to wait and see at this point yeah I think we're just gonna the previews have to wait. aren't giving us much to work with but that'll do it for this video on Alchemy of Souls if you have any theories as to what Jang Ang has been doing and what his return means for the show leave it in the comment section below but if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe for more Asian entertainment and K-pop reactions as always this is where we're watching this Sunday we'll see you guys next time